Hello and welcome to Elsinger. It's a production of Galactic Networks. I'm Gregor Sprague and joining me is Beatmaster Corey is off for the month of November. I think doing NaNoWriMo. Um, and, but for if you want to find more about us, you can go to Elsinger.com or uh, GNCast.com for the Mothership's uh, doings. And on Else Nerds, as a warning, we will swear and we will spoil stuff. So you have been warned. We hope you survive the journey. Uh, B, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, good man. And yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, last week was interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think that was the first time because we we wanted we were going to have a show last week, but. It was weird because oh, I can't do Friday because I went to a friend's party. Uh, they had a Halloween party. Uh, that sort of pissed me off a little bit. Um, and then I went to what would have been the only day Corey could have done it. And then it was like, all right, I can't do Tuesday, can't do Wednesday with like work related shit and then thursday i went and saw dr strange and friday i'm like i ain't feeling all that great let's just hold off on the show but yeah so i am feeling better and uh we will we will go on carry forth and do a show um so let's get to some news and this one i'm actually a little sad that we're not going to get Corey's take on it because i know Corey was a or is an Alton Brown fan. And this is that Alton Brown is bringing a cooking show to the internet. Now this is a this is a direct sequel to Good Eats. He mentioned this 2 weeks ago on Facebook doing a Facebook live thing and the you could watch the video and it was mainly him taking suggestions from the from the fans from the people who are watching live, which was great. It was great to see that um, and he mentioned that he didn't want to um, show, or he didn't want to call the show. Um, oh, what was it? It was like, uh, but that's another show, and just do do videos on the things that he that he said in, during Good Eats that would have been another show, because that sort of pigeonholed him. And he also said that he didn't want to keep it on TV because of the fact that um, he has full control when it's on the internet. Um, there's not the, oh, well, can you do another chocolate video? We love them chocolate video episodes of Good Eats um, or, you know, anything like that. Um, it will be coming out. It, will, it won't debut until sometime in 2017. Um, but it's. I'm really excited for this. Uh, Beatmaster, do you even know who Alton Brown is? No. I read up the article on Engadget and all, most reality TV I'm oblivious to, so I don't follow the characters or the persons on it, but the thing that caught my eyes, the thing that you said, he's now shackle-free and on the internet and can do edgy stuff, or that what you, do you expect from him? how he utilizes yeah. his new freedom. Is he going to run out of ideas and just go with profanities? Or what, what's his? It's, so, so let me explain a little bit what Good Eats is. Good Eats was his cooking show. And the reason why I, I came to it so quickly um, when I had finally gotten the Food Network is it wasn't Julia Child's, like, now today we're going to make you a souffle. And you know, and doing step-by-step -step instructions on how to do things. Those are fine. Those are good. Those, if you like those type of cooking shows, great. Um, what he did is he, he was notorious for teaching you how to use tools, how to use cooking instruments in other ways. He said the only true, what, this is a quote they had while on Good Eats, the only true multi or unitasker he had was the fire extinguisher. Every tool, everything he had okay. on there could be used to make 
something uh, to do more than one thing. The hunter has Tom's love of cooking. Then okay, um, why not? He's um, he's basically like the Bill Nye of the cooking world because he he broke down the science of things um, and like like for example, what makes a lemon meringue pie a lemon meringue pie, um, and you know how to uh, why you want to uh, do these things. And, Wasn't there and all that? And I'm just like, okay, it was fun. It was like you're learning here, but yet you're not. You don't feel like you're learning. It's why I loved uh, Bill Nye. Wasn't there a cooking show that has done scientific things to food, like Frozen and uh, other such things? Yeah. It existed before that, not. Yeah, he's done. He's done stuff like that. He's done the things that you wouldn't think of to do with food. Okay. And all that. It's not the um, Guy Fieri. Uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives, where it's some guy, and I'm gonna do this, and rah, and he does it. It's doing something different because you wouldn't think to do it that way, not doing it for shock value, like Guy Fieri had. So, where would he go with his new freedom? You think what? What's the takeaway? Then? I think there's there's just a big world of possibilities. Um, I think because I think with these freedoms not gonna be like tied down to doing all right like food network okay uh february we're doing this month where we're, we're we're only gonna be talking about chicken recipes or some made up bullshit thing like that it's he it's him and his crew the writing to get to, to where they'll have like okay let's do a episode on beef or let's do an episode on chocolate let's do an episode on alcohol whatever I mean, his crew wants to do and then probably even more whatever the fans want to see i think going to be the big thing is we're going to have better fan interaction that's the question the same with the top here the follow-up show so and that if the restrictions were the thing that made them so creative, or it's really that they were held back, held back by the big wigs, and no, only can get better. It's interesting to see for both if it succeeds because of it or fails because of it. Yeah, I don't know. It's it is interesting, and I I can't wait to see it because I want to see what he has, what he could come up with as. You know, as as a nerd, as a guy who who looks who does these cooking shows in a very scientific way. Story is from IO9, and this is um, another screenwriter has left. It has to be a TV show. Um, so B, you are out of the two of us. You have read Sandman. You probably know more about Sandman than I do. So. Why don't you take the lead on this story? Okay, I, I'm not gonna go into sentiment specifically and bore you with things we already talked about or you heard from various the gaming fans. Because if you meet one, you're gonna know in 10 seconds because he's gonna tell you. So we're not gonna go there. But the interesting thing is that such a project landed with New Line Cinema that you maybe recognize uh, as a great source for horror films like the uh, Elm Street movies and others classics, but they have also so, so had made some changes and when they uh, got the, the gig for doing The Lord of the Rings, they said afterwards that the finances, the budget, th that it was a loss, each Lord of the Rings movie. So they're yeah. accountants and they're trying to get money out of the movie production itself, not really caring that much for the intent, intended product. And that's what uh, is my takeaway that Neil Gaiman and other previous persons that were involved all see that already what we're heading to and that it can't really go anywhere on the movie because you have to split it up after two, two and a half hours. And that doesn't work with the material. It takes a longer time. And so it lends itself really well to a Netflix or HBO series. 
as it is a solution for most things that we want to see these days from comics that are a little bit more than just uh, team up movie or origin stories. And for that, we have all the signs that point towards this disaster. But New Line Cinema won't drop it, they won't listen to that critique of the uh, creators. And so we're going to get a product if you want to or not. Yeah. It from reading the article, like glancing through the article, it sounds like this is a little bit more money grab. And this is disheartening for me because when this came, when the big, the news of this came about, you know, the first time it was that Joseph Gordon Levitt was attached to I think he was writing it at one point, but he was going to direct and star in the sh in the movie. Yeah, and then he left, and it's it seems like le legendary, you know, le a new line, um, which I think is owned by Legendary Pictures or something like that. But the it seems like they would realize this and then try to sell it or, you know, get the work with a TV studio because I think also they could get more money out of this in my, if I'm thinking correctly. We're talking hundred million to $300 million movies in the comic book world these days. Well, yeah, it was there. I don't know if it holds up, but we're no, talking. Yeah. So, but, but we're TV also talking, we're, we're talking at the very more than likely it'll be, three movies because everyone loves a trilogy if they do tv series especially if they do it on netflix or hbo we're talking multiple seasons we're talking you know maybe five six seven seasons if it takes off and you get the right people in there um to write produce direct act in it um you know one of the reasons why I love The Walking Dead right now is because it's still, you know, with the TV show, it still feels so young and so new to me because of how the actors and the film crew are all in there. Like, um, from hearing, you know, different news articles and watching Talking Dead and all that stuff, it's like, all right, they still love doing the show. So I still, and it's one of the big reasons why I still love watching it. It's not like it's a, Oh, well, I'm just doing it for the money, and then I want all the monies. It's just Let they love doing right it. The same with uh, New Line Cinema, and I don't say they were bad because they want to make money out of it. Not at all. That's the purpose of a uh, business. That's yeah. first and foremost a movie business, not a uh, artsy fartsy thing that we sometimes pretend we would like to have, but not really go to the movies that come out from these people. So. Uh -huh. It's a, a grab that they not plan on a success just to m uh, make a write-off or such things as they have done before, and uh, that doesn't do justice to the material at all and ignores it entirely. So I don't see that these people thinking long term as you propose, and even then, uh -huh. I'm not sure that the amount of money can equal to that of a successful franchise, but it will be a church dread or regret sorry the, the new one there's so much potential yeah. but it leads to nowhere and so we're gonna be unhappy the fans the studios will also moan and bitch about the fans that bitch and moan about them and uh, it will be a massive turd I see, I see it coming my yes. way yes speaking of fans bitching and moaning Yes, I'm going to use that as my segue. I don't fucking care. Um, but fucking autoplay. Goddamn comicbook.com. Um, Young Justice Season 3 has officially been announced. Um, this comes after, gosh, I mean, when they say years, it's been years. It's been close to 10 years since Young Justice came out. And or and um, Young Justice was essentially her version of the Teen Titans. This had the except where the Teen Titans was the sidekicks, 
this was the where there were still sidekicks in Young Justice. It was more the younger, um, younger ver- not versions, but younger heroes, teens coming in here. Like you had like like Miss Martian, who wasn't Martian Manhunter's sidekick, but in, or something like that. Um, or his niece and was coming in that way to be with with this team to learn how to be an earthling and stuff like that. And it it's one of those shows that I started to watch and I really loved. And then it just sort of fell off my, the map for me. Come back and I'm like, oh, cool. And then it was gone. I'm like, what happened? And I think that was also about the time I started getting... I'm like I looked in up I looked up the and did some research and I'm like they fucking canceled my show what the hell so you did watch it on and all that Cartoon Network not on Netflix afterwards you watched it when it was air I watched it yeah I watched it on Cartoon Network and all that um but the uh the creative team uh the producers uh Robert Vietti who did Batman Under the Red Hood and Superman Doomsday and Greg Wiseman, who did Star Wars Rebels and Gargoyles, um, they'll be coming back for this. And it's one of these that I was so ex- I was like, okay, I, they, they have to be coming up with this. And I just, I don't know. I didn't look through to see where Young Justice Season 3 is actually coming out on. If it's coming out on Netflix, if it's coming back to Cartoon Network, or what? But overall, I am just super stoked um, to get more of this because, you know, if people eat this up, then maybe we could get you know season four, season five. You know, we could get these more stories, especially with this is what I hate about some of the the serialized story. Uh, series that we've cartoon series that we've had on Cartoon Network, especially the ones under the DC banner. They they have cliffhangers, and it's like, and they're popular enough where it's like, yeah, they'll come back, they'll it'll be resolved. And um, yeah, girls were watching the show, and so we can't we can't market to girls. So fuck you guys, we're not renewing it. It just seems like stupid shit like that. Well, the thing is with Netflix, as it's owned by Warner Brothers, I don't know if they're going to do such a fan favorite outside of their own network. So the question I think, if honestly, it's CW it would, it, I don't see it being on CW because of the fact that it'd be cartoon. It's still going to be cartoon. Um, So it would probably be Cartoon Network. But I honestly could see them licensing out this out to Netflix because they'd be getting money that way. Um, the creators are still there, so it would still be the product that the fans want. And there wouldn't be as big of a risk because they're literally just licensing the characters out to Netflix or, or, you know, creating the stuff for Netflix who would be giving them a big check up front and then probably some residuals depending on how many subscriber numbers they actually got or something like that. Where if it was coming out on Cartoon Network, it would be against a lot of the shows that are on there, like, like going against type. Like even Steven Universe, which is the, the closest one that I could think of, Steven Universe is still fifteen minute episodes, and where they do have serious episodes, a majority of them are are light are, are you know lighthearted episodes with Steven just going around around the neighborhood. You know, it's not all right. There's these aliens that are invading. And we got to stop them. I mean, you, you look at... I mean, look at Teen Titans Go. It's a, it is just joke after joke after joke. 
Now, I'm not saying it's bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying any of these shows are bad. I'm just saying that right now it doesn't seem like Young Justice Season 3 would fit on Cartoon Network. Netflix is the be all uh, for for all these things. I just not sure that if if they want to be that or just want to say, okay, we want to come up with our own stuff. But if they have exclusives, of course, that's another value for them. Just an, another tool that they can pitch to people that aren't sure if they have enough content for them to be interested in. I think Warner Brothers has enough common sense. <laughs> to oh, know we might to know that, that yeah, to know that more than likely going to a um like opening up creating a new thing is not necessarily going to pan out yeah jeff Trump I mean, says I mean, not in, look, not in look, charge that's CBS. the good thing about it yeah it's a different it, person yeah doesn't... look look at cbs right now with their cbs all access yeah you know it has a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff in their catalog. You know, these throwbacks, it has, I think, every season of Big Brother um, out there, including the Big Brother Over the Top, which, eh, more like under because no one cares. Um, And it even has the, er, had the promise of, oh, this is where the Big Brother live feeds are at, and this is where You know, you could go and get, you know, these other, you know, digital, you know, all access original stuff there. And it's like, eh, eh, it's, it's, it's just one solo market. Like, like uh, Star Trek is a perfect example. It's one solo market with them going, okay, you'll get it here in America on CBS all access, but Netflix everywhere else. Americans. American viewers happy. They're like, no, I already pay for Netflix. Why do I got to pay 10 extra dollars a month for your show that I don't even know if it's going to be good? You know, I'm going to watch it because I'm a Star Trek fan. Sorry, that's a, I just channeled Brad there. Um, send all hate mail to Brad Ludwig at, uh, on the alien invasion because that was not me. <laughs> But no, I mean, I'm excited to see this, to be honest. Um, I I just, yeah, bring it on. All right, and the final story for the new segment is that um, the uh, the Predator... Okay, no, I've, I love that this is an exclusive on Collider, but the Predator does not take place in the suburbs. New Predator movie going to be a sequel and it is going to be uh written and it's also gonna be directed by shane black yeah and uh, not a sequel to the uh, robert rodriguez reboot it will be a sequel to the first it's... original john mcteenan version yeah so we may, may yeah see so that's Dutch. good so that, that's the, ho uh, the hope many uh, hardcore fans have that arnie will be back yeah it's not even to the tracks, but... um so that's now I want to get Matt on here for his thoughts on that. Um, but no, so yeah, that's, that's actually cool. That is, it is going to be a sequel to the original. And, um, and we, we do know that some of the, we do, we do know some of the people who are going to be involved, including, uh, Boyd Holbrook, uh, from the Netflix series, Narcos. Right. Children. In the film. Um, I don't know who, who does he play on Narcos. It plays uh, one of the federal agents that uh, are after uh, after him after. Uh, okay. Well. Okay. Um, and then we also learned that Olivia Munn, who was on Magic Mike, The Newsroom, um, Attack of the Show. Don't you forget um, the big uh, one? Maybe an X Men movie that was uh, not the best. Yeah. Um, is in talks to join the ensemble and so this is actually interesting um for me uh, to a degree because i'm not exactly a i haven't seen the first predator like i've seen bits of it ever it's like i have respect for this this these movies 
but it's not like okay, I'm I'm excited to go watch it. Sort of deal. Just for the listeners, I'm yours. I, I'm usually in chat and communicate the other way with the people, but I can say here how many times I had to gasp at movies that I thought you had to have seen, but then they, <laughs> they get then remember how young you are or how old I am. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, Predator it holds up for yeah for good fun. Watch it with some pals and have a good time. And uh, you, could, you have a government? beat. There's a problem with that. My pals live across, you know, all over the world. Like I got a pal right now in Switzerland. So I mean, that's the problem with like, it's like, all right, one plane ticket. Hey, B, you want to watch Predator? <laughs> like there are pages that uh, provide that service, but that's another topic for on itself. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, the first movie, John McTiernan did also Die Hard. And he was uh, a guy that was against the showing of uh, use of weapons and uh, uh, heavy action just for the fun of showing blood and uh, carnage. And then he went into Predator, and you see there just an iconic scene. You have seen that clip that where they just sew down a jungle with their guns, with their heavy guns, and yeah. down and think they're gonna hit something. And that's just true. Show them a chase more and all anything that's wrong with it, and people like kind of bit like with Starship Troopers, just got the wrong impression and thought that was a great gun show and loved it because of it, even though it was made as a satire on a certain level. So it's it's interesting just for that reason. But uh, when you have some behind the scenes stuff on the DVDs and other things, you you can delve deeper into it. But we don't go in, into here. The main thing is that. He also shared with Collider what he has in mind to do with the sequel. And uh, it's interesting that he doesn't want to go the typical route of uh, sci-fi horror. It's uh, the part that he want to insert is fun. And it should be one truth and about perceiving things that human beings very seldom get the chance to see. That's uh, speaking out of the point of view of the characters, not uh, from the viewers. But he wants to bring in a different slant. And, uh, did you like Iron Man Free as uh, out of the free? Uh, the yeah. Thing? No, yeah. I've. I mean, I. I don't think I've found a. An a Marvel movie that I haven't liked, um, you know, and, and I'm including the Sam Raimi, Spider Man films, the uh, um, you know, the the X Men films, you know, anything that was made by Marvel. With the exception it's, of Apocalypse, which I haven't seen, I haven't seen the second Ghost Rider. Uh, last uh, movie. There's a, the like out of every every or the uh, Edward Norton, uh, but that's more of that's a good one. Like, yeah, I caught it weird. Like it was at a weird time. But I mean, I like. Honestly, I looked at like man, the Iron Man three. That was a good. That that was a good story. It was a different story because it that's wasn't. It. That's the point. He has a different angle and brings it into the existing premise, and doesn't change it up. That you don't rec recognize it, but you see that he brings a different yeah. tonality and everything. So, I've, I'm good hopes that the thing goes much farther than Rodriguez did, though. If you don't haven't seen that one, the new one, it's also a fun thing if you want to see Adrian Brody in his prime. <laughs> uh, in his Jesus. prime. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I say I haven't seen it. It's not like I'm not excited to go to see the movie. It's just like, like, all right, it's one that, you know, I will go see it more and like I will more likely go see it in theaters if I, if friends are like, "Hey, you want to go see Predator?" I'm like, and sorry for reminiscing the past. I forgot to bury the lead there that it won't be about the Predator being in the suburbs like uh, some some THR uh, report did have a source that told him that and that will not be the case. Ensures us that that won't be that, and just to completely tell the story that we uh, began with that won't be the case so it will be a different setting that 
what you may he hear of, of different pages. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now it is that is it for the news. 